everyone, it's Michael Dugal with eXp Realty. I'm really excited, as you can see, I'm shooting this video outside, which means we are way into the spring and summer real estate market. I'm shooting this video on May 9th, 2020, which means we've got all the data from April 2020. Let's go ahead and look at the stats, and let's particularly answer the question of how has COVID affected the real estate market. This is the question everybody's wondering. It's how has the real estate market changed? Have prices changed? Has the rental market changed? And how has it really affected home ownership for them? So let this video be your guide. We're going to discuss the average price for all categories of homes. And we're going to go over some important statistics like days on market, the health of the market, whether it's a buyer's market or a seller's market, and what markets are suffering most and which markets are doing the best. Let's get right into the video. So in GTA as a whole, in April 2020, there were only 2,975 residential transactions. This is down by 67% from last April 2019. Although, don't get confused, this doesn't necessarily mean that prices have dropped. It just means naturally there's less buyers and there's less sellers in the market. Overall, people are less comfortable going out looking at property, and understandably so. Although the fact is interest rates are still very low and people do ultimately have to buy, which is why there's that fraction of buyer out there. As I mentioned in my previous video, in case you did not tune in, there's two serious types of buyers we're seeing in today's marketplace. Those are people who have either sold their home pre-COVID or their tenants who have lease contracts expiring. As well, the number of new listings was only 6,174 in April 2020. And this is 64% less than the number of new listings which came out in April 2019. As an experienced agent, something that I can share with you from my experience is that right in April after Easter, that's when a lot of people are putting their homes on the market and that's just not what obviously happened this year. So if you were to ask me what my predictions are, when things to normalize a little bit, then a flourish of new listings are gonna come on the market and there will be more buyers, which makes it a great time to buy and to sell. Here's a statistic which really caught me off guard and I think you'll find it surprising as well. It's that in April, April, the average sale was higher than it was in April 2019. So yes, the price has obviously been affected by COVID and prices have dropped marginally, although the prices are still higher than what they were last year. So the average price is $821,392, which is up by 0.1% versus the average price in April 2019, which was $820,373. Keep in mind, this encompasses everything. This is the whole GTA. We're talking Peel, Halton, Durham, and Toronto, and as well as York region. It also encompasses all types of home styles, whether it's a detached, a semi-detached, a townhouse, or a condo apartment. So I will break it down for you because different styles of homes have been affected more so than others. Let's take a look at active listings. In 2020, the month of April, we had 10,561, which is down by 41% since last year. In April 2019, the number of active listings were 18,037. So there's two things. Number one is that people are not listing their properties because they want to wait until COVID ends. And second thing is that the people who had their homes on the market pre-COVID are just taking their listings off because they're more comfortable showing their home after COVID is all dealt with. What I'm finding being in the market, talking to people every single day is that the majority of the listings which are active are active because they're a vacant home. So they may be a second house for somebody which they just have empty. They don't mind if people come by. So because the number of active listings is low, because the number of new listings is low, this is why it's still a pretty healthy market and prices have not suffered too much here in Toronto versus other areas like Vancouver and some places in the States like California California and Florida. All right, let's go over the year over year percent change for different styles of homes. We'll look at detached, semi detached, townhouses, and condo apartments. So, first, we'll address the sales. This is not the average price, this is the number of sales, like the volume you can say. So, as you look at the detached market, there was 68% less detached sales in the 416. So, that's Toronto, that's south of Steeles for most areas. And the 905, there was 65% less sales in April 2020 versus April 2019. And then we look at the semi-detached homes. Similarly, you can see the number of sales is down significantly, 54% in Toronto and 65% in the 905. Townhouses, we can see the number of sales is down by 68% in the 416 and in the 905, they're down by 64%. 
And then condo apartments, this seems to be affected the most significantly, not only with the number of sales, but average price as well. We can see that in the 416, there was about 70% less sales than there were in April 2019. And in the 905, there was 75% less sales. And here, let's take a look at the average price because what so is you can see for the detached market, the 905 wasn't hit too hard. It's only 0.8% less than what it was in April 2019. And it's 7.8% percent less in Toronto than it was back in April 2019. For semi-detached homes, everything's up. The 905, it's up by 4.2 percent versus last year, and it's up by 4 percent in the 416. Townhouses, similarly, that's up. It's up by 3.5 percent in Toronto, and it's up by 4.4 percent in 905. And then, as I mentioned, the condo apartments, they're down by 4 percent over what they were last year, and they're up surprisingly in the 905 by 1.5 percent. This is interesting because the condo apartments, they experienced like a lot of appreciation in the beginning of the year. So this just naturally meant they come down. So with respect to the condo apartments, this is very exciting news for buyers because in early 2020, prices were really up. We're talking one bedroom home selling for 100,000 more than what they were selling for last year. And if things continue that way, then a lot of buyers would just be out of the market. So this gives buyers a lot of hope. If you have hope and you're looking to buy, call me 416-671-5218. And here's where things really do get interesting because from what I've discussed, the market looks pretty healthy looks like prices are good. Although if we compare March 2020 to April 2020, then we can really see how COVID has affected the average price. Before we were looking at the price change year over year, now we'll take a look at the difference between March and April 2020. So what so is the average detached home in March sold for 1,107,000. The average semi-detached home sold for 889,000. Average townhouse sold for 721,000. And the condo apartments were selling at $658,000. So as we look at the numbers now, we can see that the condo prices have been affected the most. And why this happened, there's a few reasons. Firstly, a lot of buildings are restricting showings, so buyers aren't able to see properties. So what that means is that buyers are really making their decision based on photography. And then in the offer, when they write it up, it's subject to them looking at the property. Other reason is that in a number of buildings, there's one person who has COVID, which will naturally make any buyer uncomfortable going ahead and looking at a unit in that building. And then there's the big issue with tenants. What I'm finding is a lot of landlords are choosing to sell their homes because they're getting in some sort of conflict with their tenant, whether it be their tenant not wanting to pay rent or their tenant just refusing to leave the property. So that makes things quite complex for an offer because buyers in this market, some of the times they're making offers conditional upon COVID clearing up and the tenant being comfortable leaving the unit. Because what's so is the landlord and tenant board are changing their laws regularly. And right now tenants don't have to stay. If they refuse to leave their property for whatever Whatever reason, then landlord just has to work with that. The semi-detached and townhouse market weren't hurt too much, although detached homes they've dropped from 1,107,000 to 983,000, which means that's a significant drop. But when you take into account that we're looking at higher price ranges as well, this is not as much of a drop because there's more expensive homes, and I don't feel the numbers really tell the story here because a lot of the more high-end homes have just delisted their properties. So naturally, there's more sellers in the lower price range. All right, as we further analyze the market, we can see that the average list price to sale price ratio is 98% which means if you listed a property for a million dollars, it would sell for $980,000. Whereas back in March, that average was the opposite. It was 103% of asking price, which meant the average property was selling for over their asking price. What I'm finding is a lot of the change is quite similar to what it was back in April 2017 with respect to the styles of homes. Of course, prices have not dropped that significantly, but what I'm finding is that there's less homes for the higher price ranges. Like the majority of properties which are selling are below 1.2, and it's a pretty healthy market for condos, townhouses, and semi-detached homes. What I'm finding just being in the market now is that more buyers are starting to look. The situation's calmed down a little bit. It's just a matter of time before a lot of sellers put their properties on the market. There are some issues which are coming up which weren't coming up before in that a lot of landlords have tenant-occupied properties where the tenants have COVID or somebody has COVID and that just means they have to either wait 14 days or they have to do something which can mitigate everything to make it a comfortable process for everybody. I'm social distancing. I hope you are too. I hope you all found this video helpful. If you're considering buying or selling or investing, or even if you have questions, call me, call me, call me. I'm not too busy for you. My number is 416-671-5218. And if you know anyone else that may benefit from any of the information in this video, just copy and paste the URL from YouTube, send it to them. Or if you receive this by email and you're part of my database, then forward them the email. Don't forget to click subscribe, give it a like on YouTube, and make sure to comment there as it really helps the algorithm and hopefully we can get some good information out there. And I'll look forward to seeing you all next time.
I've recently switched to a new brokerage where I'm an owner and a partner in, and I'm looking to expand my team. So if you know any agents that are looking for opportunity, then as well have them call me on my phone number is 416-671-5218. And I'll look forward to seeing you all next time.